Julian Huxley, the first director of United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, better known as UNESCO. In 1946, Huxley wrote UNESCO, its purpose and its philosophy in which he outlined his vision for the newly created international organization. In the following excerpts from UNESCO, its purpose and its philosophy, we'll see what Julian Huxley's vision for this organization truly is. Huxley writes, Here it is only necessary to recall that in the last few decades it has been possible to develop an extended or general theory of evolution which can provide the necessary intellectual scaffolding for modern humanism. Here we get the first glimpse into the mindset of Huxley, having humanism as the basis for a belief system built upon the theory of evolution. The importance of this can be seen in the very next statement by Huxley. It not only shows us man's place in nature and his relationship to the rest of the phenomenal universe, but allows us to distinguish desirable and undesirable trends and to demonstrate the existence of progress in the cosmos. Why is this important? Because Huxley's vision is guided by the firm belief in the theory of evolution as we can see in his following statement. And finally, it shows us man as now the sole trustee of further evolutionary progress and gives us the important guidance as to the courses he should avoid and those he should pursue if he is to achieve that progress. It not only shows us the origin and biological roots of our human values, but gives us some basis and external standards for them among the apparently neutral mass of natural phenomena. I included these statements in this video to establish the basis of Huxley's beliefs this is important because the policies of UNESCO were guided by this belief system and they will affect every person on earth when the one world government is put into place. Policies based on humanism as he himself confirms in the following statement. Thus the general philosophy of UNESCO should it seems be a scientific world humanism global in extent and evolutionary in background. The true danger of such a basis for governmental policies is that there are no higher moral standards to dictate the ruling of peoples. I say this is a danger because of the following statement by Huxley. At the moment it is probable that the indirect effect of civilization is dysgenic instead of eugenic, and in any case it seems likely that the dead weight of genetic stupidity, physical weakness, mental instability and disease proneness which already exist in the human species will prove to be too great a burden for the real progress to be achieved. In other words, human imperfection gets in the way of evolution. And what is the solution to this problem? Huxley states, Thus, even though it is quite true that any radical eugenic policy will be for many years politically and psychologically impossible, it will be important for UNESCO to see that the eugenic problem is examined with the greatest care and that the public mind is informed of the issues at stake so that much that is now unthinkable may at least become thinkable. In other words, figure out how to condition people to accept eugenics. As we will see in later videos, Eugenics and population reduction are part of the agenda of the New World Order. Here we have one of the founders of the UN openly promoting eugenics. As we see in the next statement by Huxley, the globalists believe that they not only have the right, but the self-appointed authority to determine what is right and what is wrong for society. We read, UNESCO must accordingly promote the study of philosophy as an aid in the clarification of values for the benefit of mankind in general. It must also do so in order to have its own clearly thought out scale of values to guide in its own operations, both positively in what it should undertake or assist, and negatively in what it should avoid or discourage. 
This is further clarified in the following statement. In general, we may say it is becoming necessary to extend our personal ethical judgments and responsibilities to many collective and apparently impersonal actions, in other words, to undertake a considerable socialism of ethics. Again, in the following statement, we can clearly see that the globalists believe they have the right and authority to dictate and impose values and morals on society. Huxley states, It will be one of the major tasks of the philosophy division of UNESCO to stimulate, in conjunction with the natural and social scientists, the quest for a restatement of morality that shall be in harmony with modern knowledge and adapted to the fresh functions imposed on ethics by the world of today. As Huxley's visions come to pass, they will completely remove the people's right and ability to think and decide for themselves what is right or wrong. A full set of morals and values dictated by the elite whose basis of thought is evolution and humanism. This is the coming one world government, a world in which we are all slaves who are told what to believe and what is right and wrong with no freedom to choose for ourselves. Welcome to the New World Order.